In the heart of every vineyard and in the soul of every barrel lies a story, awaiting to be told. A story of passion, dedication, and unwavering commitment to craftsmanship. Every swirl, sniff, and taste encapsulates a universe of flavors. Our journey takes us to the Western Cape, more specifically in Stellenbosch, the heart of South African wine, a land that is lush and green with rolling hills and stunning views. It offers more than just wine tasting. It gives you the experience straight from the roots of the vineyards down to the process of how the wine is made to when you savor your first drop of wine from your glass. This is a story of the winelands of South Africa. My name is Matume Mbata. I'm the market manager for Africa at Wines of South Africa. Wines of South Africa, the industry export marketing body with a head office in Stellenbosch. We have an office in other parts of the world, an office in New York, an office in London. We have an office in China as well. And we also have a long-standing relationship of agencies we work with in the European market. We also obviously in the African continent do extensively well. We have stakeholders and agencies we work with in East Africa as well as West Africa. So pretty much Wines of South Africa's role is about promoting brand South Africa in the wine space and we focus primarily on exports. The basis of any good wine begins from the soil. Hutton and Cloverly clay loam soils derived from the Cape granite provide the key to the vineyards in the Western Cape. Its rainy winters and long dry summers provide the perfect growing conditions for the grapes. With its warm Mediterranean climate, diverse soil types and mountainous terrain, the Western Cape is ideally suited to a wide variety of cultivars. Cabernet Sauvignon is the most widely planted However, Merlot, Pinotage, Shiraz, Chenin Blanc, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc all thrive. The thing about this area, it's actually famous for rich limestone soils and throughout the, this region, a lot of people just focus on Chardonnay base wines and Chardonnay itself. Yeah, so these are Shiraz grapes and a very clear indication of a Shiraz grape is that you'll always find a leaf that is bigger than the palm of your hand, like for instance here. Giant leaves. We are on the outskirts of Stellenbosch. We are basically the first winery into Stellenbosch and the wine, last winery out of Stellenbosch. And all of our vineyards are across the road up the hill. We don't have any mountains, so we get direct access from falls by the Atlantic Ocean that blows over our, vi over our vines, which makes us about five degrees cooler than Stellenbosch itself, which is perfect for um, a Pinot Noir. There are different types of wines that fall under the different categories from rosé to red wine and white wine. White wine, which is among the most popular cultivar grown in the Western Cape, has different styles and varieties. Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Moscato, among others. you got white wines, unwooded whites, wooded white wines, um, red wines, then you can have you know, lighter style rates, medium bodied rates, full bodied red wines. You can have sparkling wines. Method Cap Classique is what we call um, our champagne in South Africa. We're not allowed to call it champagne. Um, so in South Africa, we normally refer to Method Cap Classique. And then you also get your dessert wines, your sweet wines. Um, so wines can have different forms of sugar levels, different um, levels of acidity and then obviously different levels of tannins. And tannins is normally um, the taste and the structure in the wine. Um, and it all depends on a the consumer. There is wines that is specifically made for easy drinking purposes, wines that are more heavier that you can sell away, keep for five or 10 years. Um, 
And then there's wines that you can literally, what we call a, like a pizza pasta red wine and you just want to enjoy with a few friends, enjoy a lovely bottle of wine, it's not very complicated. And then you get the wine connoisseurs that want to have maybe a specific red culture while going with that perfect juicy steak and it's just a match made in heaven. Between Robertson and Bennevale lies the Dusthof Wine Estate, one of the most popular names in the South African wine industry. The foundation of the wine estate is built on Chardonnay. Despite them producing other kinds of wines, each different wine in their portfolio originates from individual vineyards with its own soil composition, aspect and climatic exposure. This ensuring each wine expresses its own unique taste and personality. The majority of the, the wines in here, so we've got uh, just under 1.7 million litres in this room here. So if you don't know what, what 1.7 million litres look like. Most South African wine estates are family owned and are generational inheritance. The four cousins, who are a third generation of wine lovers at the Fun Lover and Family Vineyard, started their journey in the mid 1990s when Henny, Neil, Bussell, and Philip came together after completing their studies, joined the family farm, the Fun Lover and Vineyard, near the Western Cape Town of Robertson. In 2000, the foursome created a wine that they were eager to share, thus bringing the birth of the four cousins. Eldest cousin of the four cousins, and me and my cousin Neil, is the youngest, we're responsible for the vineyards on the farm. Hi there, Kenya. Well, I am the youngest um, and always will be. Um, so yeah, both of us are in charge of the vineyards and harvested, harvesting started last week. So very excited about the season in front of us. Hello, Kenya. I'm your winemaker. I'm uh, Basil, one of the four cousins. And uh, we just started harvesting uh, last week. And I'm busy making wine. That's why I've got the short sleeves on tonight. Good afternoon, Kenya. Yeah, it's interesting. We all speak about being the youngest. But we are 24 years on from starting the brand Four Cousins in the year 2000. My name is Philip. Philip. And uh, I've on my second to my right here, my brother Neil, and right next to me, Basil, as you've heard, and his brother, Eni. And we are two sets of brothers, uh, officially linked by, by family and, uh, and cousins in real life. And that's how we started the brand many years ago in South Africa. And then in 2000, uh, we sat around the table with a 1.5 liter bottle on the market, which is affordable. It was Basil's idea saying, let's bring out the four cousins wine, a sweeter style wine for the consumer. Uh, those pictures on the bottles, you believe it or not, before the digital age, they came out of our albums, literally cut it and pasted, heads out of photos, gave it to designer and that's how, that's still the original uh, pictures from, from that day. So yeah, it was uncomplicated and I always say, if you did marketing research on the brand, we probably never would have launched it because nobody thought that faces on a bottle of wine could or would work but it, it was probably just the perfect positive storm in terms of the name which was recognizable the big bottle the sweetest style wine and the faces just played its part so that was just the the lucky the lucky add-on for us the reed valley wine estate is one of the oldest wine estates in the robertson region with a history dating back to 1864. The estate has been in the Berger family for six generations, preserving a rich heritage of winemaking. Alvin Berger bought the farm in 1864 for his son, Jacobus Franz The estate's vineyards are characterized by limestone-rich soils and a Mediterranean climate. These conditions contribute to the distinctiveness and the complexity of the Reet Valley wines reflecting the essence of the Robertson Valley. And according to the hectares we have, St. Cabernet Sauvignon is the most red culture planted on the estate. It's the biggest percentage. Cabernet Franc, the least, because we only had that single vineyard in 2003. So this is without a doubt, red filet in a bottle, and we only produced 2,600 bottles. In the winelands of Stellenbosch, Harvesting season is a most exciting time and it usually occurs between January and March. 
Some wine estates handpick their grapes during the harvest season, while others use machinery. The harvesting begins at around 3 a.m. in the morning and ends just a few minutes before midday due to the scorching sun. Today is our first day. Um, we started later than usual. We normally start 2 o'clock in the morning and then we harvest only till 10 o'clock in the morning. So from 2 to 10. That's because it's um, four hours before the coolest time of the, the, the coolest time of every day is, is obviously before the sun comes up. So that's four hours before sunrise, which is normally around about six o'clock this time of year. And it's four hours after sunrise. So that's the, the window, that's the coolest part of the day. So we can get a proper eight hours of harvesting in and we make sure that the quality of the grapes is as best as we can get it into the cellar. So during winter you get harvest longer, longer time? A winter? No, no, we, our harvest is only for three months of the year. We start this time of year, to middle to end of, of January, and the harvest stops, well, the grapes are, all the grapes are ripe and ready to harvest. So we stop harvesting obviously at that time. is end of March, beginning of April. That's the Southern Hemisphere harvest window. That's what we, the time that we harvest. The Franschuk wine tram takes you on a circular route through the picturesque Franschuk Valley. Crowded with sprawling vineyards, each having its own identity and palette of flavors for you to sample. The wine farms are a sight to behold. Your adrenaline is raised beyond expectation. The sight captivating. On board is a wine sommelier who educates the passengers on board about the wine and the vineyards around it. When you come, we welcome you onto our trip. We give you a glass of wine and uh, that's the Chenin Blanc from Ale Bleu. Uh, which is just uh, a few kilometers from our ticket office, Kuruchi Drunkenson Station. You can enjoy this wine on this one. You can enjoy it with salads, some seafoods, or chicken or pork dishes. Hi. The French Shook Wine Tram provides a delightful and immersive way to discover the world-class wines and breathtaking scenery of the French Shook Valley. The scenery, some good views. Um, good views of the mountain scenery and also the vineyards along the way. So that's some of the scenery that you see along the way. The winemaking process begins with a careful selection of grapes from the vineyards. Grapes are handpicked and sorted to ensure that only the highest quality fruit is used. Once sorted, the grapes are gently crushed to release their juices. From they're all handpicked and the whole bunch uh, gets fr tipped into the press for the for the first uh, uh, to, to separate the juice from the from the grapes. The crushed grapes, along with their skins, seeds, and juice, are transferred to fermentation tanks. And what we do with the red grapes, we leave it on its skin for about four to five weeks. So it goes through. Um, alcoholic fermentation, so that will be the first fermentation that normally occurs during the first four weeks while the grapes with the berries are still in the tank. So you don't press the grapes beforehand, you leave it on the skin with the berries. After fermentation, the wine may undergo further aging and maturation in oak barrels or concrete barrels. This stage allows the wine to develop complexity, flavor, and texture. Normally, is a vessel used to fatten up and to bolden up a wine. Now, in our cellar, it is not common that you'd find we make wine from one vessel. No, we divide it. 100% of a wine you can ferment inside the stainless steel tank, but then 50% you can take out. The 50% that you've taken out, 20% you put in clay, 10% you put in cement, 20% you put in oak. At the end of the maturation, you then blend them back together. So then you've got one wine that has all the characteristics, all the benefits of these vessels. So having a cellar like this, it's a winemaker's dream or playground, because they can play with anything. Acidity, minerality, oakiness, intensity, it's a dream for them to have. That is a non-blot, it is made from cement. 
Springfield Estate may use a combination of French and American oak barrels for aging, depending on the desired style of the wine. Wines are aged in French oak barrels. These are 300 litre barrels, so they're all from Seguin Moreau in Dijon in France. And what makes our barrel regime quite special is we rack our wines every three months. So every three months, we take the barrels down, we siphon out the top 98% of the wine, and then all the sediment and residue that remains behind, we rinse out, um, wash out the barrel, clean out the barrel, let it dry overnight, and then the next day we refill it with the same wine. So during that process, you're constantly skimming out all the sediment, all the bits. So when we do come to bottling, our wines are clear, there's no need for fining, there's no need for filtering because we've been doing that process throughout the entire aging process. Once the wine has reached its desired level of maturity, it's carefully bottled and labeled. The bottles are then packaged and prepared for distribution to consumers, ready to be enjoyed. The Cap Classique is a term specific to South Africa and is used to describe sparkling wines. It is produced using the traditional champagne making method. It can however not be called champagne, as champagne is a protected designation of origin that can only be used for sparkling wines produced in the Champagne region of France. 2014 we were still producing still wines too, but wherever you go in the world and you mention Grand Beck, people think of bubbly. So we decided let's stop doing other things and just focus on bubbly. And yeah, and since 2016, it's only been Cap Classique. Graham Beck is a highly respected producer of Cap Classique. They offer a range of Cap Classique wines, including their popular Brut and Brut Rosé, which showcases the classic elegance and vibrant flavors that have become synonymous with the brand. Graham Beck Brut Non-Vintage or Brut or nectar or nectar rosé non-vintage, year after year after year after year, it'll taste exactly the same. That's the objective of the winemaker, to make it taste consistently the same and of the same quality. We all desire a rich, vibrant taste of wine, be it a Chenin Blanc, a Pinotage, a Merlot, or any Cabernet Sauvignon. By engaging our senses and paying attention to the appearance, aroma, taste and finish of wine, you can develop a deeper appreciation for its complexity and nuances. Accessible as a drink, do not be fooled by a sense of thinking that that snobbish approach of swelling, slapping and spitting should actually deter you from wanting to explore wine. Try as many wines as you can because that would help you to appreciate it, but also very critical is that while we do that, we also push the agenda of that people should consume alcohol responsibly. You know, there are certain regulations that need to be followed. We need to adhere to that because then it means we'll be shooting ourselves in the foot if we don't take care of that area. People should know that wine should not be a drink that needs to be abused or you know, destructive. It must be a builder of sort because through wine, it being a so-called liquid lubricant, it can means we can engage and talk and have a conversation over a glass of wine and be decent like that. So it's very critical that we push the most important message. I think even for the Kenyans, do drink responsibly. As the sun sets on this captivating journey through the vineyards and cellars, we raise our glasses to the timeless artistry and passion that fills each bottle, reminding us that in every sip of wine lies a story waiting to be shared. Cheers to the beauty of the vine and the magic of the grape. May your glass always be filled with good wine and great company. Here's to the magic in each bottle and the stories waiting to be told. Cheers!